Welcome to our 2018 trike tour of Iceland, part 2. From the thermal fields of Mervatan we travelled east to Eilstad by bus. To reach the fjords on the coast we had to climb for 20 kilometres up the 800 metre high mountain pass. The great thing about climbing mountains is the breathtaking views. The best thing is the ride down the other side. Just outside Rota Fjorda, we passed through a six kilometre tunnel which had been bored between the fjords. At the time, this was one of the longest tunnels in Iceland. evening we'd reached Fastroots Fjorda, where we stayed for the night. Throughout the night we heard the sounds of the wind become increasingly fierce outside. The following morning a gale warning had been posted for the area. Knowing it would be too dangerous on the roads, we chose to stay until the warning was lifted. Eventually the winds died down and we explored this picturesque little town. Next day, with the warnings lifted, we were once again able to hit the road, exploring the beautiful scenery along the banks of the fjord. In the next fjord over, Stodvar Fjord, we stopped at Petra's stone collection. This garden has on display many incredibly beautiful stones collected from the local region. By this stage in our journey, we developed a routine with our trikes. Loading our trikes and setting off each day had become easier. While we averaged around 50 kilometers a day, for the most part, we felt fitter and healthier than when we began. Up until now, birds had not proven to be a problem. On this morning, however, when I left the safety of my trike to take some photos, the birds approached closer and began to swoop. After fleeing from the attacking birds, we settled into a pace along the gently undulating road lining the mouth of the next fjord. We were making good progress until we hit the last unpaved section of the Great Icelandic Ring Road, covered in loose travel. We slept the night at Djupivagor, in a barrel, and awoke in the morning to an eerie fog covering the coast like a blanket. This unusual sculpture lined the shore of the bay in Djupivagor, constructed from differing shades of granite. Each egg in the collection varies in shape, each representing the different birds which regularly choose Iceland as their home.
days sometimes seemed to roll into each other, it was always a reminder that nature here reigned supreme. landscape had started to gradually change from the rugged fjords of the east to the wide rural fields of the south. In the distance were tantalising glimpses of the great sheets of glacial ice yet to come. At Harley we found the Thorberger Thordesen Museum a tribute to a prominent Icelandic author who grew up here and wrote of the days when this area was completely isolated from the rest of the country. The great ring road we are travelling on has been here less than 50 years. The views of distant glaciers become closer now as we approach one of the scenic jewels of Iceland, Jokulsalon, the Glacier Lagoon. icebergs and glaciers as far as the eye can see. A grand parade of crystalline colour and shapes of all sizes. It's impossible not to be drawn in and consumed by this landscape masterpiece in ice. A little further west of Jokosalon, we found another glacier lagoon. Though smaller than the first, it had a fantastic view of the glaciers feeding it. Sadly, we eventually had to drag ourselves away from the icebergs. Once again on the road, we found ourselves fighting strong headwinds for more than an hour before we stopped for the night. The next day we headed for Skaftafell and the nearby National Park. A short hike into the surrounding hills led us to a couple of local waterfalls. We continue to be awed by the never-ending majesty of the scenery surrounding us. Taking the slower route by trike has allowed us to soak it all in. 
yet still allow us to watch the world transform around us as we travel through one great magical landscape to the next.